Hi, this is Nick Haraz once again with Motion VFX, bringing you a very exciting tutorial integrating a couple of Motion VFX products that I find extremely useful uh, for my creative workflow process. Now, in a time driven environment, one of the greatest things that I have at my disposal as a video editor is M Logo. Logo allows you to have automatic animation with any of your logos. It comes as a text element, or basically an element that you can discover in the title browser of Final Cut, where you have up to 30 presets that you can choose and use. And what's so great about it is I hover and skim over the M Logo 04 effect, you can see that it's an automatic animation. If you look really carefully at the beginning, it also adds extrusion. The greatest thing here is this ML that you're seeing is not the final logo. You can replace this with any still image that Final Cut Pro can import. So if you have a PSD file, you have a PNG file, you have a TIFF, you bring it into Final Cut, replace this ML element, and all of a sudden your logo is going to become extruded, animating on screen right away. I like this M4, M logo underscore 04, and I'm going to apply it to my timeline. So I'm going to select that, I'm going to hit E, and just seeing a couple things here. I'm going to select it and hit the question mark. Look how it plays right away. You can see the element and then you can see right away that that logo then fades off screen. Now, I would like to do a couple things to the animation to change it. First of all, I don't want that ML there. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to change this file. Over here to the side, in my events, I have a PSD file, the Motion VFX logo. Uh, I'm going to replace the existing ML with it. So I'm going to click on this area where it says your logo here in the inspector. At the bottom of the view it asks me to choose a clip that has the your logo you want to use and I'm going to click on the logo. You'll see that it updates right away. It doesn't look quite right but don't worry we'll take care of that in a second. We're going to apply it to the clip. Problem right now is as you can see the M logo off. I would like to scale it down so you can see right under the your logo is a logo scale. I'm just going to decrease that in size a little bit. You can see right away it updates. And now my Motion VFX logo, it's a little small that I wanted, that was about 23%, but I'm going to scale it back up to about 40, fits inside the animation. And if I select it again and hit the question mark, right away I have that lovely animated effect. I can't tell you how long this would take me to do in a program like Motion or any other program that I use for 3D extrusion. This is a nice quick and efficient way of getting off logos to clients in deadline driven environments. A few more things. The rest of my project which is incorporating this logo does not involve a widescreen uh, so I really want to get rid of this widescreen on the logo itself. So I'm going to bring down the widescreen opacity here at the bottom and you can see right away those black bars go away. I'm also going to change my floor color with a couple easy steps. I'm going to hit this little arrow here to the side and choose a nice dark blue for my background. You can see that that updates right away. Now that I've created that dark blue, my logo is getting a little bit discolored. So I want to increase the brightness or light intensity there so that the logo shines a little bit more. I can choose that to about 900. seems to do the trick on the logo itself looking great. So in fact I'm going to bring down the floor color there just a little bit closer to white and we can see it so much better there on the screen. So a final thought here. What I'd really like to do is have this logo pause on the screen directly here. Now in order to achieve this I could easily do this within motion so I can click on any of these logos over here including the M logo 4 which I'm using and open a copy in motion and then replace out my substance later or I can do a little bit of a hack here in Final Cut and the hack I'm going to do is I'm going to place this M logo underscore 04 into a compound clip and once I place it into a compound clip I'm going to be able to perform speed changes on that clip directly in Final Cut so let's just take a look at that with this logo selected in the timeline I'm going to go to the file menu and choose new compound clip. I'm going to change the compound clip name to M logo speed change. I'm going to hit OK. And if you notice in the timeline, first of all, the color of your clip has changed because it's now a compound clip identified by this little icon in the top right hand corner. If I need access to the parameters of that logo, 
All I have to do is double click the compound clip and as you can see embedded inside of it is the M logo. I simply select it and then I have all access to the properties of the M logo itself. Well, I want to step outside of the compound clip, going back into my Final Cut Pro project, and here's where I'll create that speed change. So right here in the time, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to go to the Retime Editor, and I'm going to choose this option called Blade Speed. Once I do, my clip actually got cut in half into two speed effects. And on the second speed effect, I'm going to click on the speed menu again and just choose to hold it. You can see right now I've created a kind of hold freeze frame. I don't need any more of this final uh, normal speed, so I'm just going to bring it in. Cool, so I'll just play back that effect, and you can see that it comes to a nice stop. Right, so I'll just play that back again. It comes to a nice stop, the logo. Now that's made possible for this little sort of semi-translucent line here called a speed transition. That's available from the Retime Editor. You can just activate it here. But by blading the speed of a clip, the minute that you change any of the actual properties, such as when we made it into a whole frame, it creates a transition between those two points. Awesome. Now rather than have the logo itself leave on the end note of a whole frame, I want to place an M flare effect on top of this and then keyframe the light as well as the size parameters in order to have a bright burst of light on the outro. So here with my logo selected, I'm going to go into my Final Cut Effects browser and in my Final Cut Effects browser you can already see that I'm on the M flare category. I'm just going to scroll down to take a look at a couple of the effects and I'm kind of really digging the fat studio lamp. Can see here that's how it's going to be applied to the motion VFX logo I'm going to double click it that's applied over top sweet once I select the actual compound clip I can drag with the on-screen controls the lens flare in a pretty quick amount of time so it's not obscuring the logo that much make a couple more changes there we go kind of like its position there and here at this point in time is where I want to start to have the actual lens flare ramp up so that the screen is completely white. So at this point in time I'm going to go to the video tab of the inspector where my flat blue M flare is sitting and I want to add a keyframe right next to the size as well as the brightness parameters. I'll move my playhead to the end of the Final Cut Pro project. I'm going to then ramp up the size to something about 400 and you can see right away, I didn't even have to do the brightness value, but I'll do that a little bit as well. So there's a color change to about 150. We have almost a complete whiteout of this effect. So within a couple minutes, I was able to design a 3D extruded logo, have it animate, paused on screen, as well as add a little bit of an outro with my own use of M-Flare. You can really see how Motion VFX's products work well together in Final Cut Pro so we can have really quick and efficient workflows for those deadline-driven environments.